action bits. Action bits. Hello and welcome to this action bit on simple scaffolding. Part one is, why would I need to scaffold? Part two, scaffolding in Tableau Desktop and Tableau Prep. And part three, scaffolding in SQL and Excel. So the question is, what is a scaffold? Scaffolding is structuring data so every instance of selected dimensions are represented. So here we see that we have two dimensions, employee name and date, as well as a measure for hours worked. Now the trick here is Paul and Jessica are employees, but they did not work the same dates. Paul worked June 1st, 2nd, 6th, and 7th, and Jessica worked the 3rd through the 8th. So there is going to be some missing data. So through the act of scaffolding, which we see on the right, we can see that all dates are represented for the employees. And that results in null values, but at least the underlying data is there for us to work with in Tableau. It also helps us account for missing data. So here we see that there are all sales in the south and the top map, and every state is represented. Where below, if we look at copiers in the south, we see that there are some states that are missing. Again, scaffolding will help us with that issue. It can also help us predict a row count. So here we see the distinct values for shells are corn, flour, and spinach. Toppings has four distinct values, and protein has five distinct values. So we're able to predict the row count simply by multiplying those. Three times four times five gives us 60, so we know that there's at least 60 combinations of tacos to be made. And then finally, it helps reduce joining mistakes. So here on the left table, we see Jessica's hours and her dates and hours worked. And on the right, we see Paul's hours, the dates he worked and the hours he worked. If we were to join those tables or try to join those tables based on date, we would see that only Jessica's dates remain and it'll only show two dates for Paul and not painting the full picture of the story. Now we're going to jump into Tableau and utilize the sample Superstore data set. So to begin with, on the columns shelf, I put the region pill and state province pill. And on rows, we have subcategory, creating this cross tab below. Uh, we are taking a look at the south region only. So that is on the filter shelf. And we are summarizing our sales. So here we can illustrate that in Alabama, there are no bookcases uh, sales, so there's no data associated with that. In Arkansas, there's nothing for appliances and nothing for copiers. Uh, even if we take this and wrap this in a ZN or the zero null function, we'll see that uh, the formatting changed, but nothing changed underneath. We still see empty value. We see nothing. So. To further illustrate this point, let's take a look at this map. So we have copiers in the south region, and we're taking a look at, um, again, uh, the south region. We're looking at the subcategory of copiers, and we're summarizing sales. And what we, what we don't see is Tennessee, Mississippi, Arkansas being represented here, uh, even though they're part of the region. And I can show you that by bringing this region over to the marks card and then I'm going to change this over to map and I'm going to change the color to 40 percent and I'm just going to bring change the order here and we're able to see again that Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi are part of the region, but they're not showing on the map, again, because the data is not there. So how do we resolve this issue? Well, we could do it within Tableau simply by taking our distinct values of region and state province by bringing them to the row shelf. That's going to give us all the distinct values. And I'm going to hit Control A, Control C, or Command A, Command C, either way. Uh, and then I'm going to go up here, and I'm simply going to paste this data by hitting control V or command V. And I have this clipboard here. I'm going to edit this data set. 
And I'm looking at this at the logical layer, but I want to take it a step deeper. I want to look at it at the physical layer, and that's where we're going to make our, our join. So uh, the other join I need to make is on our subcategory level. So here's the distinct values. I'm going to go through the same steps. Control A, Control C. Going back over my clipboard, I can edit this data set. <clears throat> Again, dive into the physical layer and Command V, and we'll see that show up. And, you know, because we don't have the right, the same uh, values, the same dimensions to join on, we're going to create our own. So I'm going to create a join calculation and I'm just going to put a value of 1 on the left side. On the right side I'm going to do the same thing. There we go. And I'm going to put the value 1 here and hit OK. So what this is doing is now I see a representation of every region, of every state, and every subcategory within those regions, and that's called a scaffold. We're making the data available. Now, what I want to do with the next, the next step is I want to look at the orders table uh, in our sample super sword data set, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to point to that, and that's just over here in Excel. I'm going to click open. And I'm going to join my scaffold to the orders table. So I'm going to drag out orders and we're going to create this relationship here. And I'm going to select my field, so I'm going to join on a region to region. And I'm going to join on Uh, state to state. And finally, I'm also going to join on subcategory to subcategory. And I have myself a scaffolded data set. So the result is going to look like this, where um, we have, again, the region, state, and all subcategories within it, and we're actually able to do more with it within our visualization. So I remember before, uh, I couldn't even hover over this point. Uh, now I can. It is now essentially null instead of just not there. Uh, and now I can do, go ahead and wrap this in ZN and we'll actually return values of zero. So that gives me more to work with there. Uh, I could do calculations um, based on that. Um, and we're also able to take a look at our map here and we see that uh, the states are now represented even if they have zero sales. And I can even take this a step further, which is nice, and right click on the sum of sales, go to format, and click on pane. And wherever there's a null value, I want it to say no sales. Right? That's descriptive. Um, it's also better than zero sales, it's just saying that there's no sales uh, in those states. So that helps paint uh, a much better picture than having it null or empty. Um, next, I want to take you into Tableau Prep. And within Tableau Prep, it's a similar set of steps, but it's actually much cleaner. So here I have my orders from the sample superstore data. I am going to use an aggregate node of subcategory and simply group that to get the distinct values. I'm going to do the same thing with region and country region and state province here. And then I'm going to have a join field, which is, again, a calculated field of just the value 1, similar to what we did in Tableau Desktop. And then we're going to join these 
based on that join field. So we then have every representation of the country region, state province, subcategory. And then we are able to do our full scaffold join back to the original data set. <clears throat> and it will have every subcategory represented within the state combination. So then we could then bring that into Tableau and have that to work with. And it's much easier, much cleaner. Everything is represented. It just gives us more flexibility at the end of the day. And then part three of simple scaffolding. We're going to focus on Excel and SQL. So in this case, we have a spreadsheet that can act as a table uh, of employee name and date. And if we wanted to bring, make these values distinct so that we could then bring them into a scaffolding in Tableau, uh, we could just do something like this. I'm going to go ahead and copy our employee name. I am going to insert a new sheet. And then, then I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to remove the duplicate values. So I could have my own sheet here of employee name. And I would simply do the same thing with date over here. Select all my values, create a new sheet. And this is going to be my dates. And I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to remove the duplicate values. I remove two duplicate values and I'm all set. And the result of that join is going to look something like this, where again, we have all the dates for Paul and it would be represented as null. Uh, and then it would be represented as null for Jessica on the dates where she didn't work um, and there was no entry, as opposed to it just not being in the underlying data set. So in SQL, it's very similar. Uh, here's a little simple script, uh, and I'm going to run this in parts so you can see uh, what this part of the query does. All I'm doing is select a distinct region and state province from our sample superstore data set, which I brought into dBeaver. Uh, and we can see that below, the distinct values there. Same thing. Uh, I'm going to grab that for subcategory. Oops. I'm going to execute this little string here. And we have the distinct values of subcategory. So when we do a full join, it just acts like it did in the Tableau where it was just a one-to-one -one join. And it's going to bring back every, for every region and state, it's going to bring back a subcategory regardless if they had a sale there or not. <clears throat> so as an extra tidbit, I did want to show another scenario where uh, scaffolding would be helpful. So let's say that we had a scenario where uh, we had the order date and the ship date, uh, but then we wanted to know um, if the order's still open on a particular date. So think of it this way, we have a order date, we have the ship date, and then we want to visualize the dates in between, or that would be its open date. So here I wrote a little bit of code just to do that. And this dates field is something I just created in Excel. Uh, I created all the dates for 2021 through 2024. Uh, so that creates a scaffold uh, in essence. So then when I do this join and I say, okay, I wanna make sure that the dates are between the order date and the ship date. So then uh, I get a view that looks like this. Here's my order table here. And I have my order ID, I have the order date and the ship date, and I have every day represented where the orders open for each individual order. And then I can create a visualization like this that shows me uh, on any particular day the open orders that we have, as well as uh, the ship mode is the color here. So I do see that there were six um, orders that were supposed to be same day, and they're actually not. Um, it took two days. So you might be able to identify errors or help um, your manufacturing or, or processing of the, of the shipping. 
So that is it for part three. I hope you enjoyed this action bit, and I'll see you all soon. Action bits.